So the next flower I'm going to do out of the Manchester Book of Embroidery is this one here. It's a trefoil and it's not a very difficult flower to do. I'm also going to start preparing my lampshade soon so that I can finish it. So I'm again at the Antiques Pattern Library on the Irish Crochet page and here Needlecraft Practical Journal So we scroll down and here's the colour and that's the one we're going to do and so they call it trefoil I'll just enlarge on the page as you can see it's quite simple there's nothing too difficult about it and it all works out really well so it says make a ring as before on a number 11 mesh so the mesh is a kind of little stick of a certain size that you could wind uh, that you could wind thread round to make a ring and they came in various sizes but I've never seen them sold so I don't know if they still exist so then you do mustn't forget that these patterns are over a hundred years old so it says work 20 double stitches into it and join and then a five chain one treble into the next stitch two chain repeat from and go around and then it says to make a cord of four strands of padding thread and over it crochet three double into each two chain for the leaflet leave the cord 20 double into the next 20 stitches turn with 3 chain and then 20 treble these rows should be worked into the back strand each preceding row to give a ribbed appearance repeat these rows 2 rows twice more then work 1 row of double crochet draw the thread through the loop and fasten off but do not break the thread let it lie along the edge of the leaf and work two more leaflets exactly the same finish with an edging of double crochet over the cord the whole way round the trefoil fasten off neatly overcasting the ends of cord at the back so we're going to start on that So throughout the project I'm using number 80 thread and I'm using number 10 thread to make the cord. With this particular lampshade I'm making, I'm making all the centers with the same thread as I crochet the motif. Normally I would use cord to make the center ring. So I'm using a crochet hook as my so-called mesh and I'm going to wrap it round 15 times so normally I'd do this with the number 10 thread but I want smoother centers so once I've got the thread so once I've got the ring, I'll start and I need to make 20 double crochet round this ring. So halfway through I make sure that there's enough room for the next 10 stitches because I can adjust the space of the stitches and give myself more room if I need to. Spent it in good 
So now I make a slip stitch into the first double crochet and for the second row now chain five the first three will be for a treble and the two will be for a space and then make a treble into the next stitch chain two and make a treble into the next stitch and work your way around. So I've worked my way around and now I make a slip stitch in the third stitch of the five chain. And now we're going to add cord. So it says four strands and we won't need too much because it's not a very big motif. So I'm using about 18 inches of cord, so I've bent, I've <coughs> I folded the thread over until I had four strands. To attach the cord, I slipped my hook in the two loops, pull it through and now we need to make three single crochet in every two chain space. And we just work our way around. So I stick my hook under the chain and I incorporate the cord in the stitch. If I had money enough. And every so often I stretch it a bit and I make sure there are no bits of cord sticking out and that it looks all right. So I've reached the end. I make a slip stitch in the first stitch of the row to join it up. And now I arrange the cord. So I first stretch it and then I gently tug until I get a perfect circle and there are no loose threads bulging at the back. The next part says leave the cord 20 double into the next 20 stitches. And the next row is chain three and make a treble in each of these 20 stitches but they also mention that you've got to do them into the back loop so 
you only use one of the two loops and you use the back one Once you've got that, they ask you to repeat those two rows two more times. So I'm going to continue working in the back loop. So now I'm making a row of double crochet, only using the back loop of the previous row. And now I'm going to make another row of trebles and then another row of doubles and another row of trebles. So I chain three <coughs> and now I'm going to add another row of trebles. again in the back loop So these are the six rows, so one row double, one row treble, one row double, one row treble, one row double, one row treble, all worked in the back stitch. So you can see the rib defect that it gives. And the next thing you need to do is a row of double, so a double crochet. And I'm again doing it in the back stitch, although it doesn't really say so, but I presume that's what they want you to do. And now you pass your cotton through the loop. Make sure it's not twisted.
you run the thread along the side of the leaf and you join the first next available stitch now what you need to do is to make sure that there's enough thread there so that it's loose because you're going to cover it with cord so it won't be visible and you start again making another leaflet so again the 20 double stitches and you do that twice till you get back to where the cord is so I'm going to make a second and a third leaf and then I'll show you how to crochet around with the cord so I've made the three leaves and you can see why cord is needed when you're using very thin thread it all curls in on itself and it wouldn't lie flat so you need the cord to give your motif shape so I'm going to reattach the thread at the bottom of the beginning of the first leaf again I'm going to make sure there's plenty of play in the thread there and now I'm going to crochet over the thread around the edge I'm not going to put too many stitches in, I'm not going to crowd the stitches too much And when I get to the corner, I'll put about three or four stitches into the corner so that it shapes well. And along the top, I'll put a stitch into each stitch over the cord I've reached the other corner so again I'll put a few about three or four stitches in to the corner and now I'm going to work my way down the other side and I'm going to incorporate the thread that runs along the edge
I've finished the first leaflet and now I'm going to stretch the work and get the leaf in a nice shape make sure there's no loop sticking out and as you can see you've got a leaf that now keeps its shape nicely I'm going to finish off these two and then this motif will be finished so here's the motif finished so all I need to do now is to cut the cord I leave a little space and I can fold it back and sew it in when I put it on when I use it for my work 